Welcome to today's episode of Time Well Spent. I am pleased to have one of our own Simcoe County District School Board student trustees, Zainab Jaffrey, join us today. Zainab is a grade 11 student at Eastview Secondary School, and she represents our students in the north and east regions of our board. Thank you so much for your time today, Trustee Jaffrey, as we explore the concept of racism and the steps that we can all take to move forward in standing up against it and the harm that it causes. Thank you. I'm happy for the opportunity to be here. As a voice for the diverse student body at our board, I'm honored to play a part in cultivating such important conversations. One of the biggest things I've seen schools do is take action. Um, in light of recent events in the world, I think people realize that not enough is being done to address equity, diversity, and inclusion. Our schools at SCDSB have been working towards acknowledging these goals, and I see it prominently. For example, I've been invited to read a book in a live blue spruce reading in a virtual setting at, at Hyde Park Elementary School, where many other schools will be attending. And the book is called Proudest Blue, about a hijabi girl, written by a hijabi girl. And I thought it was a fantastic idea, and I was amazed by the creativity of the teacher who organized this event. She proved to me that even in a pandemic situation, we are not so powerless that we cannot stand up to racism and equity issues. Um, another thing I've noticed is the students' willingness to have conversations surrounding the topics of equity, diversity, and inclusion. I've seen teachers incite such powerful and meaningful conversations, even in my own classes. It's not always easy to have these discussions, but we can't progress without them. And I see students clinging to these opportunities because it's something the students needed. We are a culture of 50,000 diverse students here at the board, so it's meaningful to talk about these matters in an inclusive way to everyone. And finally, one of the most uplifting things I've seen occurring in our schools and everywhere really is a renewed sense of curiosity and an inclination to unlearn and reanalyze. So I hadn't heard of the term unlearn until a few years ago, but I think it's pure genius because most acts of racism, discrimination, and inequality stem from ignorance. And I think it's a step in the right direction when we focus on unlearning the stigma and stereotypes surrounding those that face discrimination. And I mentioned reanalyze, and what I mean by that is the open-mindedness to learn about the diverse cultures and identities that we may not be fully knowledgeable about. And I see the open-mindedness of educators and students alike, all in an attempt to grow and progress. A prime example is a story I heard the other day of a young student. He explained to his mom about the different cultures and traditions he learned about in class that day. And he says to his mom, I want a friend from Africa because their traditions seem cool. And I thought that was such a beautiful story because we hear about the uniqueness of our diversity and the strength of unity and unlearning, which is bringing on positive outcomes. With the help of Superintendent Maltby and Principal Tour, the other two student trustees and I have established a subcommittee separate from the Student Senate, which focuses explicitly on issues of equity, diversity, and inclusion affecting students. We created this subcommittee in the hopes that we could inspire change and bring an awareness that empowers the students of our board. We are the youth and we are the leaders of the future. And while I do advocate for students in my role, I want students themselves to be able to channel their voices and channel their confidence to have the ability to stand firm in the face of inequality and to be unafraid to have discussions like the one we're having right now. So through Principal Tour, we have had constructive conversations. And I think the most important facet that our group sees by the end of these discussions is how powerful our voices are and the importance of progressing with hope. So 
it's difficult to stand up against racism and discrimination, especially when the obstacle you face is impossibly large and decades old. In terms of strategies, I suggest talking to someone about it. So this includes people who make you feel safe. This could be friends, families, teach, family members, teachers, mentors. Um, talking about your activism can help you stay comforted mentally because it is taxing and standing up against something that uh, something like this takes a whole lot of courage. At the same time, it could provide a new opportunity. These unique perspectives could be the beginning of something you never thought of. Another uh, thing I would suggest is to take baby steps. By deciding to stand up against issues of equity, you've already taken one of the biggest steps. You've made the realization that something isn't right here and something needs to change. But at the same time, don't be hard on yourself. Chris Gardner, who is a successful African-American businessman and motivational speaker, says it best. He says, baby steps count as long as you are going forward. You add them up and one day you look back and you'll be surprised at where you might get to. Um, my third piece of advice would be to be unafraid to express yourself. I don't think we students realize the impact that we can have. We feel limited in what we can do and I want to say that that's not the case at all. I've heard many significant events and ideas that students are bringing forward in their schools, even in my school. And it begins with an idea. It begins with a passion and it begins with a will. So I encourage students to be unafraid to express themselves, even if it goes against the norms. Now, my last piece of advice will sound cliche, but it's one that must be said, and that is, don't give up. I cannot stress this enough. You are going to face roadblocks and situations that frustrate you beyond anger. And when those times come, take a breather and remind yourself why you're doing this. I apply this in my lifestyle as well, and it helps me stay motivated in everything I do. I am so thankful for the work that you're doing, not only at your school, but as a leader in our system through the role of student trustee. You are working with many other talented SCDSB students and staff members to help bring forward positive change. Thank you so much, Trustee Jaffrey, for your time today and your commitment to improving student sense of belonging in our schools. This was indeed time well spent. Thank you for having me.